some pumpkin spice pancakes and fill you in on a little inside joke with the pumpkin spice thing. I'm going to use a pancake mix and we're going to kind of doll it up with some pumpkin and some brown sugar and some spices and it's going to be fantastic. Really great to get you in the fall mood because the mornings are starting to get crisp and the afternoons are not so hot anymore and the leaves and are falling from the trees and we have a giant oak tree in our backyard so our deck um, is getting pelleted with acorns and you can just sit on the deck and listen to them fall out of the tree and our cats will sit at the screen door and just watch it and want to go outside and try and catch them. It's kind of funny to watch. But let's see what goes into this. I have my pancake griddle all heating up over here on top of the stove and um, you all know that Krusty's is my favorite pancake mix. Really, for the, for the money, this is the best value you can get. Um, this bag is like six dollars at Sam's Club. Who could beat that? And you can do a lot with it. There's no reason not to buy this mix. So we're going to start with three cups of the pancake mix. And this will probably make more pancakes than our family will eat, so what we'll do is we'll just wait for them to cool off, and we'll freeze them in individual packages, and then they can eat them on, on school mornings. Now, is it just not worth it to make your own homemade pancake mix? I feel like pancake and cake mix are nothing more than pre-measured ingredients in a box. When you think about cake mix, or pancake mix for that matter, really, this is just pre-measured flour, baking powder, there's probably some dehydrated eggs and some powdered milk in here. This is a really good food storage item. And I probably cannot make a bag of buttermilk pancake mix this large for what I can buy it for in the store. So it's definitely um, convenient. A, a, a very convenient thing to have on the shelf and in then the food storage. And I really enjoy knowing that what I put in mine, I, they would put in theirs. So... I'm putting in a tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, and then I'll share with you in a minute our little story. I have a quarter cup of brown sugar, and it's packed brown sugar. And then we're going to open up this can of pumpkin. And I do have, I still have pureed pumpkin, well, I have home done pumpkin from last year but hmm no you can't but that, that that does bring up a good point um i had a couple of cans of pumpkin this is just plain old libby's pumpkin solid pack pumpkin um i had in my cabinet and it was kind of pushed toward the back of the cabinet and um i thought well instead of using what i have in the freezer um i need to probably check the dates on these cans now this can is is fine it's not popping it's not swollen, it's not dented, and um, I want you to see that this Best Buy date is April of 2009, and I am going to use it. So, we're going to open it, and um, Miss New America Now did point something out. In my Thursday chat when I said I don't think you use your hearing to um, ascertain whether a, can, a home can good is um is is safe to eat and uh, i was wrong and i stand corrected because she did point out that um when you pop the seal you can hear the vacuum yes, so that is absolutely correct um and when i when i put my finger on this while it was still sealed i did not hear a pop so we hear we look looks good we smell smells good we taste Tastes fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I vouch for that. Okay. <laughs> it, tastes like it tastes like pumpkin. Absolutely. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna use about a cup pumpkin and I'm going to reach here. Every time I make Rick move, because he, I have to get in the, um, in the drawer. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Rick and I are here. I thought it tasted a little metallic, so I, I had him taste it. So I think that it tastes a little metallic, and so does he. So I think that we're going to ditch this can before I put it in my pancakes. That's why you need to taste. And, um, and that just may be because we don't use canned pumpkin that often, and we're so used to eating my pumpkin. So I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to pull a bag of my pumpkin out of the freezer and thaw it out in the microwave, and we'll be right back. Okay, we've thawed out our frozen pumpkin, which I should have done in the first place. But I think leaving that information in the video is a valuable lesson. Um, we, we both tasted it, but that metallic taste didn't hit us for a minute. And that's why I put some in Rick's mouth, because I wanted him to tell me it tasted okay and it wasn't just me. Um, so maybe sometimes it's good to have an extra set of taste buds around, just in case you don't think it tastes right and you want to make sure that it does. There's still pumpkin seed in there. I think it's part of your bowl. Oh, it could be. Oh, it is part of my bowl. Whoopsie. Okay, so there goes my cup of pumpkin. I heard that, that first, you know. Yeah, you taste and you smell impeccably well. So I can taste the freezer and ice cubes. Okay, I have a cup and a quarter of water here, and I'm going to use a cup to start, and then I'm going to mix my batter. And I like my pancake batter a little on the thin side, um, simply because I like to pour it, and this is really, really thick. So I'm going to add some more water, and because this is a mix, it already has the dehydrated eggs in it, and you don't have to add eggs, you don't have to add flour, I mean, obviously you don't have to add flour, but you don't have to add milk is what I meant to say. And this looks like it's going to be really yummy. And it's another use for your pumpkin, aside from pies and muffins and pumpkin bread. You know, pumpkin pancakes are fun. And this is the time of year where you see pumpkin spice everywhere. It is. And this is our little inside joke. We used to belong, um, well, not belong, but we used to get coffee from a company called Javalia. I mean, it's really kind of saturated all over the internet. They have an impeccably good coffee. Um, but it is also very expensive. Um, several years ago, they came out with pumpkin spice as a seasonal selection. And as a part of their contingency program, you get, you know, you get these boxes of coffee shipped to you. And whenever the pumpkin spice would come out, they would ship us a box of six half pound boxes of pumpkin spice coffee. Well, we didn't really care for it a whole lot. And and it would just keep coming. And, you know, they would just say, we're sorry. Like month club. I, one year, I swear, we gave everybody we know a box of pumpkin spice coffee for Christmas just to get rid of it. We eventually stopped getting coffee from them just because it was an affordability issue and we could put our money more toward our preps instead of all that expensive, then, fancy coffee. But then... Found out my niece loved it. Right. <laughs> And then, recently, I'd say in the last two years, every time you go in the store, come fall, there's pumpkin spice this, pumpkin spice that, pumpkin spice cream cheese, pumpkin spice butter spread, pumpkin spice coffee, pumpkin spice drink mix, pumpkin spice... We, and every time we go to the store, I think I pull something off the shelf and I just stand there and hold it and let Rick see it and we just laugh hysterically because... It won't go away. Everything pumpkin spice, it's, I think it's, it's on overkill status right now. I just think it's funny. But that's our little inside joke. This looks great. I'm going to taste it. Tastes really good. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So, I've got my griddle already over here. I'm going to give it a quick spritz of cooking spray, and I'm going to turn on my fan, and I'm going to turn the griddle down just a skosh. Molly has already prepared some sausages.
Wow. Yeah, I opened the door and everything fell out. Alright. This is why I like doing it in the measuring cup. Because then you can just pour it right onto the griddle and you don't have to make anything else messy. And you make them as big as you like. Everybody's family is different. Some people like really giant pancakes and some people like medium-sized pancakes. Some people like silver dollar pancakes. Um, I'm going to put this up here so you know somebody's going to say something about it. The batter looks a little chunky, but you don't want to overmix your batter because it'll make your pancakes tough. That's absolutely right, honey. And now... You don't want to say that again in case I get paid off. When? You do not want to say that again in case I get paid off. Well, we're going to turn the pan off. I'm sure everybody heard Rick say that. If you think that the pancake batter looks a little chunky, you don't want to overmix your batter, otherwise your pancakes will get tough. Um, and you're never you, you, and pancake batter is going to be a little a little chunky anyway. Um, plus, you've got the pumpkin in there, mm -hmm. and pumpkin isn't always 100% smooth. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with making pancakes, what you want to do when you make pancakes is you want to wait until you have little bubbles on this top surface before you flip it. Now, it may take a little bit longer to get bubbles on the pumpkin pancakes because it's more, it's a thicker batter. Okay. You have a little bit more going on in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this real quick. Frankly, I think I can flip that. Perfect. Yeah. We're going to flip these, and then we're going to pull them off, and we're going to make all this batter into pancakes, and when they're all done, we'll be back, and we're going to fix you a plate, and we have a little something special to put on here if you don't want maple syrup, but I don't know a lot of people who don't want maple syrup because I think maple and pumpkin go together perfectly, so mm -hmm. we'll be back in just a little while. Okay, our pancakes are all finished, and now it's time to fix you a plate of delicious pumpkin spice pancake breakfast. Okay. You know, you're going to have a few options here. Of course, we all have our own way that we enjoy our pancakes. Micah eats pancakes plain with nothing on them, and she really enjoys them that way. Um, in fact, sometimes what she'll do is just eat them with her fingers and dip them in the maple syrup. But today, I had made, pan I had made pancakes. I made cupcakes yesterday with the girls, and we made some cream cheese frosting. And I do have a video of that. Um, but this is the leftover cream cheese frosting, and Molly really wanted to have some of this on the pumpkin pancakes because she thought it would taste delicious, and so Rick is going to have some. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a dollop of the cream cheese frosting, and I'm going to use my fingers because my husband doesn't mind if I use my fingers. I know where they've been. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do that. And that is how Rick will enjoy his pancakes. The first batch. The first batch. And I'm going to fix the second plate. You can do, I was thinking it would be really good, just butter and maple syrup and some some pecans sprinkled on there. Um, but you make them how you like them. Can you chop those? Hmm? Yeah, you can chop them or you can just break them up. Um, but there you have it. Pumpkin and spice pancakes. And sausage. And sausage. With uh, whatever you like on top. Maple syrup, pecans, butter, cream cheese frosting out of the fridge. Heck, you could probably even put chocolate syrup on there and make somebody happy. And, additionally, you could make these pumpkin chocolate chip pancakes if you put chocolate chips in before you flipped them. So that's something that we could have done, but we didn't this morning. The possibilities are endless. You could even put those chopicons in the pancakes before you flipped them. So, there are so many ways to do it. I hope you try this, and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope this has inspired you to try something like this on your own at home. So, until next time, I'll see ya!